Hi everyone, welcome to another Field Trip Friday. My name's Steve. And I'm Tanika. Where are we going today, Tanika? So today we are at the Piedmont Wildlife Center right here in the heart of Durham. Oh, I'm so excited. We're gonna see all sorts of awesome things and learn about conservation. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, come on. Come on, friends. Well, thanks for having us, Grace. Can you tell us who you are and what you do here? Yeah, so um, my name is Grace Bowman. I'm the conservation assistant here at Piedmont Wildlife Center. So I've been here for a couple years. I started off as an intern in 2018, right out of college. I graduated from UNC and I kind of just stuck around, ended up um, working a little bit with our education team. Um, and then this position opened up and I applied for it and here I am. So. Um, so my main jobs are taking care of our ambassador animals. So we have lots of animals that we'll show you later on, but got raptors, so birds of prey. Um, we have some small mammals. We have plenty of reptiles as well. So kind of day in, day out, just making sure they're all taken care of. Um, and then I also head up our box turtle study. Um, so we have an on-site study that we'd use radio telemetry for, which I'll show you about later as well. Um, and we also do a mark and recapture program. Um, and that's part of a project called the Box Turtle Connection. So it's been going on for 10 years now and cool. it's supposed to be a hundred year study. Wow. So cool. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're really long lived creatures. Yeah. So uh, the goal really is to keep it going as long as we can so we can get kind of a holistic sort of baseline understanding of box turtles because honestly we don't know a whole lot about them other than that their populations are declining so mm -hmm. yeah so that's really what I do here day in day out but I do plenty of other things too. That's <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So can you give us a little information about the Piedmont Wildlife Center and what happens yeah. here on a daily basis? Yeah so Piedmont was founded and I wish I knew the exact year but I don't off the top of my head but probably about 30 years ago. Um, we used to do rehabilitation, so we used to be a rehab center. It wasn't at this particular location, it was, I believe, in Raleigh. Um, and so we used to take in injured wildlife or orphaned wildlife, so babies without their parents, so on their own, um, unable to fend for themselves. So what they would do is try to make them better, and if they could release them back into the wild, they would, but if it was too sick or too injured, um, they would end up in places like what we are now, which is just an educational facility. So we no longer do rehab. Um, and so we've kind of pivoted towards education. So we have these ambassador animals. So they're kind of considered ambassadors for their species. Um, and then we use them in programming to talk about conservation and how to protect those species. Um, so yeah, we no longer do that, but we've been at this location for, I believe about 15 years or so. So Grace, uh, where, where are we now? Yeah, so we're in front of our barred owl enclosure. So we've got two owls in here. We have Apollo on the right up here. He's probably going to fly around a bunch. And then Athena's in the back here just hanging out. She's one of our older birds, so she likes to pretty much spend most of her time in one place. Apollo is still kind of, we call him an angsty teen, so he, he kind of moves around a lot. Um, always checking things out, always moving his head around. So yeah, um, we have had both of them for several years, but um, Athena for a much longer time. Apollo actually came in, um, so he came into rehab at the Carolina Raptor Center as a juvenile, so he was um, not quite a baby but not quite an adult, and he had fallen out of the nest, I believe, so um, he had injuries to his wing as a result of that, um, and they were able to kind of fix the wing, but what happened was it was still making noise when he flapped his wings, and for owls, silent flight is really important for hunting, so if they do make any sort of noise, that kind of eliminates their ability to hunt effectively. So that really reduces their chances of surviving in the wild. Um, so that's the main reason why he's here with us now. Otherwise, he's a really healthy bird, really happy bird. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. Carolina Raptor Center is a, is a rehabilitation um, space for, for raptors? Right, yeah. yeah. So they're one of the biggest rehab centers um, in the country, really, but especially on the East Coast. So they're in Charlotte, North Carolina, so about three hours from here. Yeah. So yeah, they do kind of the bulk of raptor rehab around here. Oh my gosh, Grace, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> so this handsome man is Otis. Um, so he is an eastern screech owl. Um, he's actually the red morph, so there's two different types of morphs or colors that they can be. And he is a red one, um, kind of reddish-orange, kind of rusty colored. Um, and then the other type is the gray morph, which we also have one of those as well. His name is Ash. Um, and so they, it's a way of camouflaging into different types of trees. So 
helps them blend in with their environments really well. Um, but yeah, so Otis is actually our oldest raptor, so he's about probably about 17 or 18 years old. So wow. yeah, he's been here for quite some time. But yeah, so Otis is still, you know, got plenty of life in him. He's, he's super curious. Um, I would say he's probably a fan favorite. Um, a lot of people think he's still a baby just because of how small he is, but he is fully grown, like we mentioned. Um, so yeah. So tell us a little bit about how he ended up here with you all. Yeah, so his story is actually kind of interesting, a little bit different from some of the other birds we've had. So he was found at the bottom of an office building, of all places. Um, so he had actually flown into a window, they believe. So happens quite a bit with lots of birds. Um, I, I don't know the details are around Otis's story, but my guess is um, with him being nocturnal, hunting at night, maybe he saw a light on um, and he flew into the window because he was attracted to that. That's just maybe a guess I have. Um, but it happens to lots of migratory birds as well when they're when they're going through their migration. Um, you know, they're not thinking of windows. They don't know what a window is. So um, things that are clear, they, they might just run straight into them. So that can be a really big threat for, for birds. Yeah, so he was brought in. He had injuries to his wing. You can kind of see this left wing of his. Um, doesn't really sit as, as neatly as the other one. Um, so there were definitely some injuries there that didn't heal completely. So, so yeah, that is why he is here. He doesn't fly. Um, he can kind of flap around. He hops around quite a bit in his enclosure, but he lives pretty much on the ground. We've got some perches really low on the ground that he sits on. And that's why I'm holding him like this as well, is um, he can't perch on a glove normally um, because of these injuries. So I have to hold my hand out kind of like a bowl to, to hold him. Normally, you have a kind of like a perch. Right, yeah, you can be mimicking what a, a branch or something would be like. Yeah, so in this way, I'm kind of modifying it for him. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for introducing us to Otis. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's probably one of my favorites. I shouldn't have favorites, but he's, he's, on, <laughs> he's near the top of the list <laughs> for lots of us, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. he is adorable. So, Grace, can you tell us a little bit about who we have right here? Yeah, so this is Edgar. Um, he is a raven, um, so not normally a bird we see around here in the Piedmont um, in North Carolina, but he was actually found in Washington State. Um, believe it or not, he was shot, I think, four times by a hunter wow. um, and survived to tell the tale. So, yeah, we're really glad he's here. Um, so he is actually a bird that we have to do a lot of enrichment with. So corvids in general, so birds like um, crows, ravens, blue jays, um, which I know you guys have at the museum. Yep. Um, they're really, really smart creatures. They know how to, to cache or hide their food um, for future use, which is not a, a trait. <laughs> Hi, Edgar. <laughs> not a trait that um, all animals have. Um, so we, we try to do some things to kind of have him work his brain in the way he would in the wild. So some of the ways we do that are giving him some different toys and puzzles. Um, and we play games with him um, throughout the week just to give him some of that enrichment. I talked about that earlier. Um, so, yeah, so some of the things we do, we have two volunteers at least that come in throughout the week and spend some time with him. So some of them will actually read stories to him just to get his brain going. Um, sometimes we'll, we'll have games where we hide peanuts, which are his favorite, um, in his enclosure or in these little contraptments that he has to figure out how to get apart. Mm. Um, get him using his, his mind and his body. So right. his beak is something that he uses a lot for pecking things out. He loves to eat eggs, um, loves to open up peanut shells. Um, anything that can kind of, he has to work for, um, yeah, are really great for him. Yeah, so we were talking about how his beak, beak looks so large, but he does a great job of like poking small holes into things in order to get what he wants. Yeah, he can be really, really precise with his beak. Um, we have a couple toys that we use where um, we might be able to show you a little bit more close, but we have some toys that are actually made for dogs, I think, but there are these little notches on the end of them, really small, like kind of the, the size that you would have to use your fingernail to kind of lift up, but he can use his beak and kind of gently pull that up to see what's underneath the caps um, and see if there's a, a peanut or something hidden in there for him. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks so too. <laughs> All right, Grace, can you tell us who we're meeting right now? Yeah, so this is Bob, and Bob is one of our eastern box turtles that is also one of our ambassador animals. So we've got five box turtles that live with us inside this cabin behind me. Um, and he's one of our three or four possibly males. Um, I can get into a little bit of how to tell between a male and female, and sometimes it's not always cut and dry. We're actually not sure about one of our, our box turtles, so 
Um, but we know for sure he's a male. A couple ways we know is he's got this really bright coloration that we tend to see in males. He has really bright red eyes. And there's a few other things. Um, if I were to show you his belly here, this is what we call the plastron. He's got this kind of big dip I can kind of stick my thumb in. And that's what, one way to tell a male as well is they have this big dip, or they tend to rather. Um, other thing is that if I show you the back of his shell here, the top part is called the carapace. You can see this kind of bell shape that goes out, sort of flares out. We tend to see that in males as well. So he's got pretty much all the characteristics that we would tend to see in a male turtle. So we can be pretty sure that he's a male. Awesome. Cool. So what are we up to? What's, what's happening here, Grace? And, and who's our new friend? <laughs> so this is Adrian. She's one of our interns uh, this spring. And we're about to go uh, turtle tracking. So we're going we're gonna to do some radio telemetry, like I mentioned earlier, um, using this receiver here. Um, so I can get you a little bit of a background on what all this is. So those eight turtles, like I mentioned, they have a transmitter or just a little kind of like gray golf ball looking thing on their shell. And we've attached it using a really strong uh, marine epoxy or glue. Um, and that keeps it on the shell. And that releases a signal, kind of like a radio station would. And this receiver receives that signal. So when we want to track a turtle, we actually will tune in to that turtle's channel um, so each turtle has their own channel and then turn the receiver on and then we'll get a signal and basically it's like a treasure hunt so the louder the signal is the closer we are so we follow that signal as we go forward so we'll move the receiver around and wherever we get the loudest signal we walk in that direction oh, okay. yeah okay. a box turtle treasure hunt sounds so amazing it's been so much fun <laughs> <laughs> i have no better way to spend my spring <laughs> sounds like happy feet to me Exactly, right? All right. <laughs> yeah, let's get going. Yeah. So we're going to find um, our turtle that we've labeled OPQ, and he's on channel five. So I'm going to get myself to five. You have to kind of... All right, and let's turn him on. You so kind of hear Oh, that? yeah. Okay. That clicking? beeping now noise, yeah. So um, in the beginning, I can usually turn it up pretty loud. That kind of tells, uh, turning up the gain is basically, it kind of gives me like, like range. And as I get closer, I turn the gain down to make sure I'm like triangulating it on him. Right. So right. if I point this way, that beep happens. And if I point oh. this way, can you kind of hear how yeah, it's, it's more fainter. quiet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna head in this direction. All right. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you thought so. I think so too. Yeah, that was so fun. And so I, I guess I just want to um, kind of dive in a little bit as to we've we've gotten to see so much of this really cool work that you're doing out here, and we've been kind of leading up to these, these this kind of deeper conversation about why conservation. And I was wondering what what are your thoughts on that, Grace? Yeah, I mean it's a big question, but I think you know it's easy day in day out to kind of forget why you're doing what you're doing. You know when you're here, you know I'm. You know, we're tracking the turtles, we're taking care of these animals, and I love doing it. But yeah, it is easy to kind of lose sight of the, the, the big picture, right, of conservation. Like, what is it? So um, I think, like I said earlier, there are lots of different pieces to the puzzle as far as what it means to conserve wildlife, right? So part of that, I think a huge part of what we do here is educating the public about those species, the species that need that extra attention. So box turtles, I don't think I mentioned, are um, classified as vulnerable by the IUCN. So really, if we don't do anything to kind of help them out, they're probably going to become endangered. So that's where we're directing our attention and our energy is those, those species that need that. Um, we know that their populations are decreasing, you know. So it's really figuring out what species need help 
um, and, and what we can do to help them and, and help protect them. So obviously having this data of where the box turtles are, what they're up to, um, you know, how long they're living, what, what's, uh, if we do find any that are no longer living, you know, what was the cause of that? Having all that data is really useful. So, you know, with this being a hundred year study, 10, 20, 30 years from now, we can see these trends over time. And um, so I think that's what's really important um, in my job is just making sure that data is getting collected so we can have, you know, this big, you know, multi-year study to, to look back on. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's lots of different ways you can contribute to the field of conservation, and these are just some of the ways you can do that. Grace, thank you so much for having us today at the Piedmont Wildlife Center. Um, it's been really interesting to see all the animals that you have here and really get a chance to see what you do in order to preserve the box turtles that we see here in North Carolina. It's been really great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, I really love having you guys here, and I'm glad you enjoyed getting to meet all the animals and learn a little bit more about what we do because, yeah, I kind of feel like we're a little bit of a hidden gem in, in Durham. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad you guys came by. Agreed. You are definitely a hidden gem. Thank you so much for having us. Um, everyone watching, stay tuned for the live Q&A. We'll get to ask Grace all sorts of awesome wildlife questions. We'll see you there. See ya.